everyone! In today's video we are going to be talking about eight psychological theories on memory and learning. Now I found the topic to be super relevant due to the fact that a lot of you are currently studying for your finals. So I thought why not take some psychological concepts and spin them around into tangible, useful techniques and tips that you can use when you are studying for set finals in order to get those A's because you can do it. Number one, memory encoding. When your brain receives information, it encodes it in three ways. Visual, so pictures and images. Acoustic, so sound. Or semantic, that is meaning. Psychologists have found that the principal encoding system in long-term memory is, no surprise there, semantic. A way you can use this to your advantage and integrate this into your study routine is by just putting yourself into the material you're trying to study. You'd be surprised, but even just rewriting your notes in your own words can help put a part of you into the material, therefore have you more relatable to the material and to what you're trying to remember. Number two, Miller's Law. Have you ever wondered why Usually, phone numbers are seven digits long. Well, that probably has something to do with Miller's Law, which states that the average person can only remember up to seven items, plus or minus two, in their working or short-term memory. Once you know this, memorizing lists takes on a whole another level because you now know that in order to improve your memory of this long list of words is to chunk them in groups of seven. Not only is this based on a psychological theory, but also it makes the information less intimidating and you're more likely to want to approach it. Whereas you're looking at a big pile of stuff and it just looks scary, man, and we don't want that, okay? Number three, retrieval. Long-term memory is stored and retrieved by association, whereas short-term memory is stored and retrieved sequentially, so by order. Two tips coming from this theory. Numero uno is my all-time favorite, which I've repeated in a number of videos, and that is try to recreate the environment or the mood or the scent or the sound of when you're learning a material versus when you have to do the test. It simply makes those associations and those connections and those links in the brain and they act as triggers. A simple example of this is when you're studying, let's say for cognitive psychology, you always use a blue marker or a blue pencil and all your notes, the main theories are in blue, 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 everything is blue. So when you're going in to do that exam, bring that blue pencil with you and use it to underline key concept in the questions. Just this simple thing can act as a trigger. Tip number two, don't just study a bunch of random keywords here and there in theories. Give them a clear order. So like one, two, three, four, five, and then just study them like that in a flow. Then when you find yourself in the exam, you can use the sequence to act as a trigger. So let's say if you're trying to remember a theory that you're like, yes, this was number four, but I don't remember it, I'm having a blank. What you can do is you can go through that list and it will just boop, pop up that number four when you just go, okay, so one was this, two was this, three was this, oh yeah, four was this one, I remember because you remember the order. Number four, trace decay theory. Psychologists have found that short-term memory can only hold information between 15 to 30 seconds unless it is rehearsed. So this tip is pretty straightforward. Rehearsal and going over the material again and again and again is pretty good at storing that information that you're trying to memorize for your exam. We all knew it, I'm just saying. Now you have a psychological theory and fact linked to it. Number five, interference theory. This theory tries to explain how we forget. And this particular one says that we forget because of incoming or previous memories that interfere with what we're now trying to remember. Number one is proactive interference. You can learn new material because of previous material that interferes with that. Or retroactive interference, which means that you forget something you've learned in the past because you learned something now. Mind you, this is said to occur when the 
theories, the tasks, or the memories are quite similar. This happened to me when I was studying philosophy and history of psychology at the same time. Oftentimes, we were talking about the same-ish things, or if not, the same kind of feels and concepts and ideologies, and I just mix them all up. Personal tip, distinguish what you learn. If the concepts, if the classes are too similar, again, you can just use color, or just simply don't study everything in one big bunch, one big bundle at a time. Number six, retrieval failure theory. This refers to when information in long-term memory cannot be accessed. So when you draw blanks, it is in there, but you just can't access it. This is when you're just like, oh my God, I know this. It's at the tip of my tongue, but I don't know this. Psychologists suggest that to get this information out, you can use two types of cues either external cues or internal slash state cues. Call them cues, call them triggers. It is basically something that you associate with a memory or with something you learned. Smell, color, visuals, even moods, states, feelings. I know I'm kind of repeating this point, but it just comes to show how legit it is. Cues and triggers if more than one psychological theory talks about its importance. Number seven, the von Restoff effect. This effect is pretty straightforward. It just says that we remember things that stand out, things that are kind of out of the ordinary or just outliers in general. However, if one part of what we're trying to study stands out more than the rest, because it captures our attention so much, we can lose focus on all the other elements around it. So everything else kind of fades and mixes in our mind, whereas we only remember that big, bold thing in the middle. In order for you to remember something, you have to pay attention to it. Attention is key, aka my video on distractions and how they are bad for you along with multitasking. Check it out. It gonna help you a lot. And finally, number eight, mood congruent memory. Basically, if you want to remember something, try to get yourself in the mood you were in when you were trying to remember it. Take this with a grain of salt, because if you're stressed out and panicking when you're trying to study, I don't want you to mimic that mood when you're actually doing your exam, because it's not gonna work very well. But if you use studying as like a relaxing and zen time, use that state of being relaxed, have a cup of tea before your exam, just like, Usa. It's going to actually act as a cue or a trigger. So with that being said, thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to give this video a, a thumbs up if you like it and subscribe to me if you like what you see because I post videos every Thursday. Good luck with your finals. Bye guys. Bye.